You know, trying to do that with Aweber would be not impossible, but it would be pretty hack. So that's where these tools that we're talking about, you know, it just make it easier. It's like one click. It's just, it's a complete no-brainer to do it with them. Hey, podcast listener, you're about to discover insider tips, tricks, and secrets to making more sales and converting more prospects into customers with email marketing. For more information about the Email Marketing Podcast or the Autoresponder Guy, go to dropdeadcopy.com slash podcast. Hey, it's John McIntyre, the Autoresponder Guy. It's time for episode 75 of the McMethod Email Marketing Podcast, where you'll discover one simple thing, how to make money every time you send an email to your list, which is a pretty... A uh, freaking awesome skill to have, and I think a lot of people would wish they have that. Now, today I'll be talking to Rob Wallen, but just quickly, I just want to mention it's episode 75. That's uh, I'm going to give myself just a quick little pat on the back here, just because I think that's pretty, pretty awesome. I hope you've enjoyed the podcast. We're three quarters of the way to 100 episodes to a century, and uh, maybe I'll do something special when I hit 100. I'm not sure what that'll be, but uh, it just popped into my head that idea. Now, anyway, episode 75. So uh, if you've listened to every episode, you, sh- you can give yourself a pat on the back too. Give yourself a pat on the back. And even you could try and do this. Tap your head and rub your stomach. You ever tried that? It's pretty pretty tricky. Anyway, today I'll be talking to Rob Walling. Rob is a friend of mine. He uh, He's big in the software as a service, sort of the software, well, the startup world, I suppose. But, um, but software as a startup. I'm sorry, SaaS. SaaS apps. Okay, software as a service. That's what I meant to say. So he's just launched a new one. He's had this uh, email, sort of email autoresponder software like AOEBA. You know, to I guess it's targeting that part of the market, and uh, you know it's been fine. I haven't been using it, but then I heard recently that he's added some marketing automation features. So think about Aweber or Mailchimp, but plug in the automation. So plug in that with AW Pro Tools, or I think Mailchimp just released some automation features. Now you might be wondering, what is automation? Now what this means is. You can say, well, if Joe, well, if whoever clicked the link in uh, email number three, and that link went to a site about Oprah, uh, send them this three email autoresponder signals about Oprah and why they should buy Oprah's, you know, and an offer for one of Oprah's products. So it allows you to customize uh, and set up, you know, it's marketing automation, automate the whole process. So you've got the right messages going to the right people, which improves your deliverability and improves your conversion rates. And it means you don't piss people off by sending them stuff they don't want to hear about. Because if someone doesn't click on a link to an Oprah article, you can be pretty damn sure that they don't really want to hear more about Oprah. Okay. Now, so Rob's just added this. He's got this great little autoresponder software, very simple, great user interface, really easy to use. And he's built it from the ground up and added marketing automation features into that. Okay. So anyway, I thought I'd get him on the show today to talk about how to set up a marketing automation campaign because he has some data based on what his customers are doing and what he's doing. And uh, today I wanted to talk to him about how to, uh, just the different ways you can set it up. Instead of just having one straight you know, email sequence, what are some different ways? Once you get some of these advanced features, whether you use his software drip or you use another one what are some good sequences to send out what triggers you know what are some ideas on how to do this and uh, we're also going to talk about the problem with uh, say aweber with aw pro tools and uh, mailchimp because mailchimp like i said just released some automation stuff and uh according to rob i think he's got a pretty good argument there that it's not ideal the way they've done it and uh, that if you do want some automation stuff it's better you're going to be better off going with a provider that uh, is built from the ground up which might be drip like uh, Rob's software, there's another one called Active Campaign. Uh, we can go from Infusionsoft or Entreport, something more like that. So we'll get into that in a minute. Now, to get the show notes for this episode of the Email Marketing Podcast, go to the mcmethod.com slash 75. I like that URL there. <laughs> now, McMaster's Insight of the Week. Today's insight is accountability. One thing I've noticed recently with my own, with the, the, the coaches that I work with and also the people that I'm working with inside McMaster's is that accountability is huge. You could have great information. You could know all the stuff that you need to do. You could have money you could have time, you could have just everything that you need to get something done. But if you are not accountable to someone, if I'm not accountable to someone, building in my hustler, if I'm not accountable to someone, I don't get I don't get shit done either. You know, I, I play around and, you know, I spend too much time on Facebook and I, uh, you know, just wasting time online. Okay. So we need to be accountable to someone. And I know that when I've got a friend or a coach or someone keeping me accountable for whether it's in business or whether it's in some other area of life, like fitness or relationships, I just do so much better. Okay, and you will too. And that's why in McMaster's, the reason this is the McMaster's inside of the week is that we have an accountability forum inside the community. So what happens is when someone joins, they get an email to go and fill out their accountability thread. And that's where they just jump in there and post a few things that they're going to do that week. And if they don't do them, well, I'm going to go and ask them what happened. Okay, they're going to get in trouble. They're going to get the angry stare from John through the through the internet. Anyway, so that's the accountability thing. So whether you join McMaster's or whether you go and find a friend
friend or a mentor or a coach or whatever, you need to have some accountability in your life if you want to be successful. And that applies whether you're just getting started or whether you're a CEO of a you know $100 million company. Okay, so McMaster's anyway, just quickly, is uh, my private community. It's uh, You'd say it's a training community. It's a bit of a mastermind. It's uh, all of the above. Uh, there's training products like the McIntyre Method on how to write emails, how to create an autoresponder sequence, how to tell stories, how to create good landing pages that really convert from a, a copywriting perspective, not the, not so much the design. And uh, what I'm really excited about right now is the templates. We've just uh, been developing some fill-in-the-blank templates, and that's for people inside McMaster. So you can go in there, you can grab a template, you fill in the blanks, and you just drop it into AWeber or drop it into your autoresponder software. So instead of having to fight writer's block, instead of having to do training, you can just get set up in you know in an hour. Grab a couple templates, set them up, and put them into your autoresponder sequence. That's simple. So anyway, and I've been finding that the templates work really well uh, for people and people just love templates. So I've got templates in there. So if you want templates, go join McMasters. The information, the mcmethod.com slash McMasters. That is the sales page that will give you all the information you need to make a decision. Now, let's get into this interview with Mr. Rob Walling. It's John McIntyre here, the autoresponder guy. I'm here with Rob Walling. Now, Rob came on the podcast, I think it was maybe six months ago, eight months ago, to talk about Drip, which was a software, a nifty piece of software that makes creating autoresponder sequences really easy. And uh, they actually had a cool feature where they, you know, you give them a few blog posts and they'd turn those blog posts into a five day mini sort of mini course for your email thing. And so in that podcast, we talked about some of the split test results that he noticed from having all these different customers, opt-in rates, what conversion rates, and what sort of businesses this sort of mini course works with. But uh, I, you know, I actually haven't spoken to Rob in a while, but he came back onto my radar recently because I got an email, I think it was from his company, or maybe someone told me about it. They've just updated their software Drip to include some sort of lightweight marketing automation features. So you've got Infusionsoft and uh, Entreport, which is some really advanced, you know, you can do, they're quite expensive, number one, say 300 bucks a month to get started and there's usually a setup fee and they can do some advanced stuff but they're quite expensive. They're not the best to get started with. So then you've got this middle layer of where people on AWeb are a MailChimp and then, you know, who want marketing automation but they're not ready or they don't have the budget for it or they just don't need all the extra features that, say, Infusionsoft and Entreport have and there's not many people really serving that market yet. So I got an email from Rob about this to talk about, well, to talk about the sort of updates he'd made to Drip. His software is now that sort of built it from the ground up and they've got some really cool marketing automation stuff. So with that in mind, I thought I'd get him back on the podcast. We could talk about marketing automation, what he's, uh, what's sort of working really well for the customers that he's got. And we'll talk about why Drip is really one of the better players out there in this market at this point in time. So we'll get into all of that. Rob, how are you going, mate? It's going great, man. It's my pleasure to be on the show again. Good to have you back, man. It's uh, it's actually quite interesting to, you know, this podcast has been going for me, I think it's like episode, probably, this will probably be episode 80, aroundabouts. And uh, it's cool looking back and then, bring, you know, seeing what happened like a year ago and then bringing someone like yourself back to see what's changed and what's new. And you sort of get a sense of that stuff does change over time. Stuff takes a long, long time to change. We all want it to happen faster, but it does change. And it's cool to see that, isn't it? Yeah, it, it always feels like it takes so much longer than I want it to, for sure. So before we get into sort of the marketing automation stuff that we're just chatting about, give, uh, I mean, the listener might not know who you are or what you do or, you know, what your thing is. So before we do that, talk about the marketing automation, give the listener a bit of a background on who you are and sort of what you do. Sure. Yeah. I'm a, so I'm a software entrepreneur. I live in, in California in the United States. And I have been starting software companies for about 12 years, 10 to 12 years. But I think what I'm most known for is kind of sharing how I do it and what I do and trying to give away as much of, of the information that helps me, I try to give that away to people. So I have a podcast called Startups for the Rest of Us. I have a blog called Software by Rob. And then I've had a number of different software successes and failures, uh, you know, ranging from uh, invoicing software called .NET Invoice to an SEO keyword tool called Hittail that I bought and revamped. And then most recently, as you mentioned, built Drip from scratch with a developer I know and team is now five people. But we're, I'm, I'm bootstrapped. I've never Never taken funding, yeah, that's where I am. Ten years later, <laughs> it sounds good too. Like I, I get the feeling, the vibe from you that you really love doing software. This isn't just you trying to make a buck, but software is your bread and butter, and you love it. Yeah, I mean, I you know, I was I'm a software developer. I started writing code when I was eight years old, so this was like 1970. I'm sorry, 1982, and I loved the code first, and I learned how to code basic, and then came up in college and got a computer engineering degree. But code wasn't cool in the 80s and 90s, right? It was, you were kind of the nerd to do it. So I was I got into sports at that point, and then in the late 90s, when the dot com boom hit in the Bay Area, which is where I'm from, um, kind of if you had a pulse. 
you could get a job coding for someone. And I realized that I had that love. So the software has always been the the primary thing for me. Like I love building gorgeous software. And the fact that it's now a valued skill and that I can build a successful business on it is like, you know, kind of the cherry on top of my Sunday. <laughs> It's cool too, I think. Like now you're getting into, you seem to build marketing tools. So a lot of like software developers or coders, they're very much just into coding and actually just programming. Like that's that's all they care about. But it seems like what the direction that you're going in, especially now with Drip, is that it's, you've got the coding and that sort of side, but you're also bringing in the marketing to sort of make something more powerful. Yeah. You know, in the beginning, I was a developer's developer. And I some of the first tools I built were for other developers, as most of us do. But pretty quickly, my first success was because the marketing was better, not because the code or the software was better than my competitors. And that's when it clicked for me like, oh, man, this I got to learn this marketing stuff. I need to get better at this. You know, I need to learn copywriting. I need to learn some SEO, learn some paid acquisition, learn some content marketing, that kind of stuff. And this was back around 2005, so about nine years ago. Once I realized that, then I, I really dove in and I really started consuming a ton of marketing content. And I think it naturally led me down this path of, you know, looking at, because there's a lot of, what's interesting is if you're a marketer and you try to build software, your software doesn't tend to be that good. Like we, you see a lot of examples of really crummy software that's built for marketers because it's built by marketers. And so I, I've tried to merge those worlds as best as I can and take my marketing knowledge plus my software knowledge and build better tools for marketers. Mm-hmm. I think that was really what I was trying to get at is how marketers, you know, when marketers build software, they, they're not coders, they're not developers. It's not even their passion. They just want to build the software, maybe make some money and help marketers do something, but it's not the most elegant software. Sure. Yeah, and that's there are a lot of examples. I won't I won't name names. I think all of us know them where you use the software and you're like, you know, I understand that this does some really cool things, but good God, the user interface is hard to use. You know, and it feels dated, even though it was built, you know, a year ago, it feels like it's ten years old already. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right then. Well, let's start. Let's dive into some of these marketing automation stuff. And you know, I'll openly admit right now that I'm I'm currently using Airweber. I don't have any like I've used AW Pro Tools before, but I didn't really get it set up properly. Partly because I was lazy, and partly because I just thought it was. I think mostly it's just laziness. It's easy to send out a whole bunch of emails and it needs to sort of brainstorm, you know, an architecture and figure out what I'm going to do for different segments of the audience. But that's changing, and that's sort of where why your email caught my eye. You know, I know I've got to change things and get over to some, you know a platform, which I haven't decided which one yet. So I'm sort of I know enough about marketing automation because I've got these podcasts, but I just haven't done anything with it yet. But one thing that I had, one belief that I have or had, was that it's actually quite complicated. And what you started to say that before this, before we hit record, is that it's really not that complicated. Yeah, I was in the same boat probably a year, just a year ago. I was thinking that marketing automation was this massive enterprise thing that you need to pay 2000 bucks a month for. And there are, there are tools like Marketo and Pardot and HubSpot that I kept hearing the names of them and I, I would go to try to research them and you can't, you can't even really tell what they do because the verbiage on their website is so high level, it's right? So it's so cool painful to read. Yeah. So it's like, ah, this is not a tool for me, right? But then I started digging in and, and there are tools like Infusionsoft that you mentioned and Entreport, which used to be Office Autopilot. And there's ActiveCampaign and now there's Drip, the tool that I own. And I've realized that marketing automation is way less complicated than I had originally thought and that it really is kind of the natural next step once you feel like you've outgrown MailChimp and Aweber, which these days I kind of consider the they're solid tools. I actually know Ben Chestnut, the founder of MailChimp. He's a great guy. The company's fantastic. But it, you know, it's getting older and it is a static email newsletter tool is how I think of it as. And they've bolted on autoresponders, right? But they're not, it wasn't built natively and there are some issues with that. And if a lot of people that I'm talking to feel like they've outgrown MailChimp and Aweber, like they want tagging, they want to be able to tag their prospects or their customers or their trial users. They want to be able to move people dynamically in and out of sequences, not do a ton of fancy stuff, not have to design some big flow chart, but maybe just have some additional features and be able to to do you know something beyond just send kind of some very basic broadcasts or very basic autoresponders and that's the that's what I'm calling lightweight marketing automation so it's not the two thousand dollar a month tool it's maybe it's fifty or a hundred dollars a month you know instead of twenty that Mailchimp is but it basically it's just a Mailchimp or an Aweber with some automation rules built onto that. Right, right. And so when, when we say automation, maybe the listener doesn't know what automation is. What's, uh, give me a couple of examples of the sort of uh, like automation rules that you might set up. Yeah, yeah, that's actually a really good question. So there's a bunch of, um, if you think about automation in terms of triggers and actions, okay? So a trigger might be someone 
uh, subscribing to your campaign, to a, an autoresponder campaign, or maybe that user clicks a link in an email that you've sent, where you send an email and you say, hey, would you like to hear more about SEO? Click this link. And when they click that, then you can take an action. And that action might be to apply a tag, right? And a tag is just a label to a person. So now that subscriber is tagged with SEO. So in the future, you can say, hey, anybody who's tagged with SEO, when they're done with the core sequence, funnel them into this other sequence about SEO that I've written. Mm. And it's just going to speak more to their interests. Or you can even write right away, an action could be, I'm going to remove them from this campaign and you know, put them into another one. Or you can even... You know, another act, uh, I'm sorry, another trigger that I'm thinking of is someone could perform a custom event. So let's say you have, uh, you're selling an ebook and they buy your ebook. Well, that, that can be an event, right? And so either you can put a one line of JavaScript to call that event when they purchase it, or you can integrate, like Drip integrates with Stripe and Recurly and Gumroad and and DPD and PayPal and all those things so that any of those will send a purchase event into drip for that customer. Mm. And then you can say, boy, anyone who made a purchase for me, tag them as a customer. So now you can go in and you can just, you can just report and you can just say, give me all my customers. I want to send them all an email right now. (laughs) You know, it's much more like a CRM, uh, like a, like a singular view of your people where an email address rents, represents a person rather than, you know, if you think about MailChimp where it has lists, like a, an email can be on three different lists and you kind of have one person represented three different times. Hmm. So that's, I, I went a little bit off the reservation on the, on the <laughs> rules thing there, but that, that's the con, the basic concept of it. Right. And I think one of the cool parts there that you, uh, you hinted at was when, because you've just got one email address for one person instead of, you know, three email or the, you know, the same email address three times for one person, you can basically go in and you look at someone's email address and it'll tell you, all right, they're on this sequence, they're interested in SEO and copywriting and they've bought these three products. Exactly. And then so you can yep. go in and you can, like I love this, it allows you to take a much more granular look at your subscribers. I can go into PayPal and look at who's bought what, but I can't go into Aweber and you know, I, I've actually got it set up this way with separate lists, which is clunky, but it works. But I can't really go into Aweber and pull up someone and look at, I have to go through manually and say, well, let's this email address, is that, are they on the prospect list? All right, let's check. Well, what about this list? Are they on that list? All right, are they on this list? Have they bought this product? Instead of just having this one, you know, this very quick one look tells you everything about them. Right, and that's done with you know it's done with tags and it's done with events mostly. I mean, there's custom fields as well. But I'm in Drip right now, looking at some customers, and I see their entire activity feed. So I can see w- when they first visited my website, from where they were referred, um, that they sc- subscribed for my prospect, uh, my lead nurturing you campaign. Before- so you can yeah. You, so you put the uh, the Drip tracking code, I guess, on your site, and that'll, that'll yes, tell that's you right. what website, what source, what the referral was. Exactly. Before they signed up to the list. That's pretty epic. Yeah, it's cool. I can trace it all the way back to that, and then I can see and them sign up for a trial. I can, so I could yep. say, for example, like this. This is a, What I'm running now is a campaign on Facebook. I've got you know, a bunch of UTM codes, so the you know, standard Google stuff. We're saying like mm-hmm. campaign, source, uh, content, that sort of stuff in the URL. I don't know if this gets embedded in Drip, but if it does, or is there a way? So when someone, say, signs up to the list and they buy you know, product one, two, and three later on down the line on you know, day 30, day 45, whatever, then I can bring them up and I say, well, this person came from Facebook with this campaign, this term, this content. They opened these emails and they bought these three products. Yes, except for the, the UTM stuff, we're not parsing that yet, but it is on our feature list. Yeah. We can do everything else that we can get the refer and we can do everything else you just said. And yeah, and UTM stuff's a no-brainer because I use it all the time as well. Right, right. So That's it's pretty pretty crazy yeah one thing uh, that I thought because I've been mean, you know very much thinking over the last sort of few months what I'm going to do with the marketing automation when I have mine set up and you know I spoke to Russell Brunson last night we did a podcast together and his setup was interesting very much like I don't know if you know Dan Fagella he's another guy doing a similar thing you have different funnels for your business so in my case it might be you know I've got a you know email marketing landing page a copywriting landing page a you know a page about landing pages each so like let's say three different funnels Three sort of different landing pages have a different offer. One of them speaks to people who want to be copywriters and offers them something that copywriters are going to enjoy. One of them speaks to people who want to be good at email marketing and gives them sort of maybe a report that's on email marketing. And then each one has its own opt-in form. And then what happens is if they sign up, they get sort of a custom autoresponder for maybe one to two weeks, which is going to sort of present everything in the context of if they're interested in copywriting or email marketing. But after that two weeks, they get moved to a house list and that's where they get pitched 
like everyone gets the emails after that. So they might sign up on you know email marketing or you know copywriting, but they end up getting funneled or moved to the the house list or the main list after that sequence, and then they get all the de- you know the broadcast emails like that. And I've heard of a few people doing that. So instead of doing having the main list first and then segmenting people off, what say Russell Brunson, this guy Dan's doing is they're seg- they're starting with the segmenting, finding out what people are interested in first, bringing them in so it's sort of more relevant, then putting them on the house list, and then sort of sending out their offers for their products to everyone in that list. Yep, and that what I like about that is it's it's just not that complicated. Mm. What you've described makes total sense, right? As a marketer, that a that's going to resonate more with them. You're going to close more more sales, and it, you don't need that much extra content to do that. And it, uh, that's where the marketing automation doesn't have to be that complicated. And I, like I said a year ago, I thought it had to be more complicated than that. But mm. even taking that step is a challenge with uh, like a static email newsletter. You know, trying to do that with Aweber would be not impossible, but it would be pretty hacky to yeah, do that. And so yeah. that's where these these tools that we're talking about, you know, they just it just make it easier. It's like one click. It's just it's a complete no brainer to do it with them. Yeah. I mean one thing I've worried about when I thought about marketing automation is that if I go and say, do that strategy that I just thought I'll let's say start segmenting people off in SEO and copywriting and email marketing. Then instead of writing one email a day to send out to the list, I've got to write you know if I've got three segments, I gotta write three emails and that you know pushes my workload mm-hmm. way up. So that's why I really love that uh, you know the strategy I just mentioned is because you can you know you have you know five emails, 10 emails for each specific segment, but then they end up on the house list. You, you still know what they're interested in, you know, segmentation-wise, but they're on the house list. Then you can still just write one email out to them. So you sort of hit right. both buttons and that's a, you know, in, in an ideal world, you probably have, you know, you know, specific emails for each segment, but it's just not how it works. Like, that has way too much work at the end of the day. Yeah, no, I agree with you. It's, it's like keep the workload low and you still get, you still get a much better result than you would say just using a straight autoresponder. Right. So let's yeah, talk. because it's so much targeted, you know, yeah. so much more targeted. Yeah. All right, let's talk about, you mentioned one thing uh, when we were talking before the call about the, sort of the different ways you can split someone up. You know, you've got customers, you've got prospects, but you can also split mm-hmm. prospects up into, you know, ready to buy to people who mm-hmm. sort of have no idea who you are yet. So what, what have you seen? Right. What are some good sort of ways of splitting an audience up that you've seen or you're using right now? Yeah, you know, there's kind of four different markets that are, I think, or target markets that are really using marketing automation, at least what that I've been focusing on, kind of the, the lightweight set. And it's people who have SaaS apps, people who are selling WordPress plugins, People who are selling consulting services, and then people who are selling info products like uh, ebooks and membership websites, and those are the ones that I'm I'm really focused on because that's kind of my market and the one that I really that's really understand. And what I'm seeing is there's kind of four stages of the funnel that people are focusing on, and it's prospects, leads trials and customers. And all the, you know, WordPress plugins don't have trials as an example, right? Mm. And SaaS may not have leads, you know, it just goes from prospect to trial, but those are really the four segments. So you'd have to parse out which one applies to you. But what I'm seeing is that people are, the, the, diff- the difference is if you set it up in MailChimp, you would have, I don't know, one big list with maybe some merge fields and you try to move people between them. Um, but if you set it up with marketing automation, what you do is you get an opt-in form that you hopefully want to appear on every page of your website to try to get people into that prospect list. And this is now fairly, it's warm traffic, but it's pretty cold leads. They don't, they don't have much interest in your product. You're probably trying to do really cold or really light pitches and you're trying to just educate them about some stuff. It's really more content marketing at that point with a PS here and there. Then as they express more interest, if they engage, if they click some links, you move them into the kind of the lead mode where you can tag them as a lead and then you kind of start talking about your product a little more, right? Because now they're, they've expressed interest, hey, maybe I would like to use your software. Maybe I would like to, to use your, your consulting services. And then you start selling a, just a bit more to try to push them towards the sale. You're still educating, but you're doing a little more selling. And then if you have a trial or a demo and someone tries that out or you know downloads the demo, well, now you know that, right? Because they've probably entered their email address to do it. So you can tag them as a trial user or a demo user. And that's really when you say, hey, you just downloaded this. Now here's an onboarding thing. Because now they've, they've taken the bait and you really want to help them get the most value value out of that trial or demo that they can. And so that's when you have a cut, like a really honed sequence of maybe four to seven emails where you're just like, here are the steps to do it. And I noticed you haven't done this, you know, because you can easily have A, 
API hooks in there that call back and say, hey, the person hasn't created their first project or whatever. So then you kind of hound them about that. Like, man, you're not going to get anything out of this if you don't create a project. And then I found just that alone is actually gets a lot of people onboarded and uh, that converts people to customers. And then you can tag them as customers and you know run upgrade specials now and again and c- communicate with customers to refer people and that kind of stuff. So it comes back to really segmenting, tagging each phase of that of the funnel and being able to communicate what's relevant to them at that point so that you're not sending customers that really early content marketing because that isn't helpful to them. You know, it's 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 just not as relevant. Mm-hmm. Okay. So that, that sort of seems very similar to the other one. I just the other strategy I mentioned where you've kind of got like you bring someone in with the prospect funnel, which might be email marketing, SEO, whatever, and then you after that, after you, you know, whether you just do it automatically or whether you do it based on a number of triggers, if they've opened say at least three emails or clicked on at least three links or whatever, then you then put them onto that main list, which is probably your lead list, which is where you get more aggressive with the, the pitches. And then I guess if you you know whether you have the trial stage or not, it just depends on what your business model is. And then obviously you have the customer stage, and then you've got upsells after that where you start tagging people like, oh, they haven't bought this add-on yet for the product let's uh, send them a sequence based on that you can go you can get real i think that's a cool part this is why it starts to seem complicated is because you can go so deep into this yeah you can you can but you don't have to i think is probably the message that that i want to convey today is it's like i kept thinking that you had to write hundreds of emails and have a different email for everybody depending on what they were doing and you really don't need to do that most of the of the kind of niches that i talked about SaaS, wordpress consulting and info products they really only have three phases each of them Mm. Some of them, one of them has four, but most of them really have three phases. And those phases don't have to be that long. You know, if you're posting blog posts and you can summarize those and do a teaser, then you have all of your prospect content that you need, right, for your cold prospects. And then if you have a nice, even a four email sequence about, getting someone to use your demo or your trial, then you're done with the trial sequence. And then you only need a few customer emails to get people to send referrals and to get you know them to take other actions that you want them to take. So it's not, it's and, and if you just do that, you will totally get the value out of it that you're paying for. You know, whether you're paying someone to write it or paying someone to for the tool, you will get so many more returns on that money. Even if you just do the basics, the tuning and the high optimization and really diving into it, some people love that. And yes, you can get more out of it, but but it's kind of an 80-20 thing that if you just get the basics done, it will work wonders for you over just sending static content to everybody. Mm-hmm. And I guess uh, you know the primary goal should be to get it set up, get it running, so get that basic setup yeah, going. That's, that's right. your 80-20. But then, I mean, if you plan to be in business for you know two years, five years, ten years, however many years, you might as well you know each month you know set up. All right, we're gonna add five emails or ten no- ten more emails or ten new triggers. <laughs> And so you're continually right. optimizing and refining. You're not trying to like race to the end. It's more of a marathon, but you're gradually, that's, yep. sort of like split testing, you're gradually improving. Exactly. And that's the thing is you, you're building this flywheel. It's not like you write this email once and it goes away. These are all sequences that will repeat over and over and over. So you're building assets over time. So I like the way you put it. If you're going to be in business for two years, five years, 10 years, you're going you're gonna to take the slow road and build this flywheel over time that's just going to elevate your, basically elevate your conversion rates across the all the stages of your funnel. Mm, I love this. This is from Perry Marshall. He talks about breaking your sales funnel into pieces, but testing each piece and sort of improving that. You tweak it. And what happens is, you know, you don't really get very far in a month or a few weeks or whatever. But over time, when you sort of you tweak this, you tweak that 10% here, 20% there, 10% here, 5% here. You get, you know, it's just the beauty of compound interest. When you, you read some ebook by an internet guru, it's like, you know, make a million dollars in three months. It's not really how it works. You know, if you're doing it for two years, if you get 10% a month, you know, on a step or a couple steps each month, whatever, over, you know, two years or five years or even 10 years, like business explodes just because that's what the compound interest does. Yeah, that's right. I mean, that's what truly building a sustainable business is, is it's building, it's even the big startups, like you hear about Y Combinator startups. And if they're growing 10% a month, which doesn't, you know, that, that's nice, growing 10% a month. But if, if you do that for a year or two, you're a big business. You get big quick. And oh, yeah. so between 10 and 20% growth is what they're looking at. And that's, that's what this is, you know. It's just building that flywheel. Yeah. All right. Well, let's talk about, because um, I know you've got Drip. Before we talk about Drip, let's talk about, like, say, let's say you wanted to do this with MailChimp or AW, uh, AWeber and AW Pro Tools. You mentioned before that you yep. know, that works. It's a little bit hacked on, though. So some people might sure. 
they, they've heard about MailChimp, they've heard about Aweber and AW Pro Tools, and they, they want to do it that way. But the sound of it, that's not the best way to do it. Well, uh, you know, it depends on what you mean by, or what, what best is for you. It's like, if it works for you, if you use AW Pro Tools and it works and it doesn't feel hacky and it doesn't break and it's good enough for your scenario, then I would say stick with it. There's no reason not to. Same with MailChimp. Um, they've, they just added, two days ago before this interview, they added some automation tools. And I know they've had requests for this forever. And they're a big company, so it's hard to just bolt something on real quick. But, you know, if it works, then I've been telling people stay with it. But my guess is that if you do automation using one of those approaches, if you have any type of complexity or any type of expansion that you want to do, you're going to outgrow it pretty soon. And when that time comes, that's when you need to start looking at something like an active campaign or, or a drip or entreport. So by the sound of it, because when you got, so it sounds like the problem is when you got a database, that's really all AWeb or MailChimp are. It's a very sort of, the database has been built or organized in a certain way for the last 10 years and it's been yep. built for them to be just a straight newsletter or a straight autoresponder thing. So when you tack on marketing automation, they're really sort of, because it's not built from the ground up, they can't do as much as, they can't do everything with the data. They have to sort of That's work right. within the rules they already have. But what you're talking about with say Active Campaign or Entreport or Drip or any of these other ones, because they're built from the ground up, they have a lot more flexibility and probably a lot more, I'm guessing they're a lot more reliable too as well. Yeah, that's right. I mean, the, the the number of scenarios that you can cover with automation rules in, say, Drip or Active Campaign is definitely a lot more than than what you can do with MailChimp or AW Pro Tools. Um, there's just a lot more edge cases you can cover. We spent like two months just moving data around to make this possible because we didn't build Drip. Like when we built it, you know, a year ago, we didn't build it with automation rules in mind. So we stepped back and took two months and we moved data all over the place in order to make this possible mm. to build it, you know, really from the ground up. Now, MailChimp couldn't do that. They just literally have too much data to, for that to be possible. So they would have to bolt on, you know, that's kind of the phrase we use in software. It's like bolting something onto the side of a car, bolting it onto the side of a building. You kind of have to bolt it on and work around your limitations. Mm. And so they do have automation, but the further you dig into it, you'll notice right away I started looking and I was like, huh, well, I can't do this. Like there's some very basic things like that you still can't view a subscriber. At one email address is not equal a person in MailChimp. And that's still a fundamental thing that I that you really want if you're going to do this well. You yeah. know, you don't want that email address to appear on three different lists and for that to look like three different people. Hmm. And there's an element too here where someone might be thinking about, well, I'll just go MailChimp for the next few months or go on Aweber and do that for the next few months and then I'll switch later on. But I think the downside, and this is why I've put it off for so long, is I know that once I switch, because it, it's, I mean, it's going to be a pain in the ass just to move for Aweber to anywhere. So now I'm thinking, well, if I'm going to do this marketing automation stuff, I don't want to do it to one place and then go, ah, oh, this didn't really work out. Yeah. Let's do it again. I really want to get yeah. something that's going to grow with me for the next one, you know, one, two, five, ten years, you know? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, because doing it, doing it once and then repeating it would be kind of a pain. And at, at this point, there's the pricing difference used to be more, but it's not actually that much if you look at it. MailChimp and Aweber, what do they start right around 15, 20 bucks a month? And uh, Active Campaign and Drip are right in, I mean, they're like, what we're for 30 to 50 bucks a month to start mm. so it's like if if you are going to move into that it's not like it used to be where you know market marketo and pardot are 800 a month to start and entreport and infusionsoft are two and 300 to start but now there's people that are like us you know they're coming down that are really making it a lot easier to kind of get into that mm. well, let's talk about drip then what's i mean we've you mentioned drip we've spoken a little bit about drip so far but let's uh, sure. so we'll wrap it up here the content but let's talk about drip and sort of what you can do with drip yeah i mean so you know, Drip is lightweight marketing automation that doesn't suck. I mean, that's kind of the, <laughs> the headline that I'm using on the website right now. And to be honest, I took that headline from a customer who told me, who told us about six months ago, he said he was trying to tell me all the features he wanted. And he was saying, I want an email address to represent a person. I want to be able to move someone around, you know, with a list, with a click. And then he kind of got flustered on the Skype call and he said, can you just build marketing automation software that doesn't suck? And that was, that was a thing. And I was like, that is a, that is a headline right there. <laughs> so that is literally the headline on the homepage right now. And um, Drip allows you to basically do everything we've talked about here. It allows you to, to tag customers or prospects or leads as customers, prospects, and leads. It integrates with Stripe and Gumroad and Recurly and Chargeify and PayPal and DPD. So, and we're, we're rolling out like one or two more a week so that any payment provider, we want you to not have to write any code and for it to just call into Drip and be able to say, boom, this person made a purchase, tag them as a customer, move them into your customer list. You know, not your list, but your customer campaign. We're integrated with um, Unbounce and Lead Pages and we're adding some more uh, landing page folks so that you can easily have landing pages and just send the folks into Drip. Um, Drip still has that pretty cool, I love the widget 
that you just put some JavaScript in website footer and on every page of your website, you can instantly have an email capture form. It's a little toaster pop-up, kind of like the chat windows, you know, the Olark chat. Yep. And it'll collect emails from every page of your site without you having to go in and mock with HTML. It just works. And so that's how you get that prospect list started. And I can't tell you the number of people who've come in and they install that footer. And I keep thinking to myself, boy, you know, once they make their first sale, they're going to be happy. But they get five subscribers their first day and they email us with this, just this roar, like, I can't believe I have five people on my email <laughs> list already. And I just say, and it's like, man, that, you know, I'd forgotten the joy of that. When, you, when you're just building your list, like how hard it is to get people on your email list, it's really cool just to get a handful of folks on it. Hmm. And uh, I think what's really cool is I haven't, I haven't transferred anything across yet, but I'm in the back end of Drip actually right now. And, and the interface, you've made this thing, like it looks beautiful. It looks real good. Yeah. We have spent, I mean, like we talked about earlier, I'm a software guy. And so when I use software that isn't easy to use or that isn't well designed, it pains me and I'm pretty picky about it. So we spent an enormous amount of time and I hired a couple guys who are quite expensive to do the, the design and then the user interface and then the user experience, the UX, to try to make it so that you don't have to click 20 times to get somewhere. You don't have a bunch of pop-ups that interrupt you. You know, it, we really think through the phases. If you want to get from here to there, what's the quickest click path? And we look at it. It's, I mean, it's more of a science than an art building software, right? There's a lot of rules and patterns that we follow to try to make it super simple for, for folks to get started with it. Yeah. Cool. All right. So well, let's wrap it up here then. Uh, if people want to learn more about you or about Drip or about anything else, where's the best place for them to go? Sure. Um, well, Drip is at getdrip.com or it's actually the number one result in Google right now for Drip. I don't know how long that'll be, but uh, it's been that way for a couple months. That's, that was kind of cool. That's good. And then um, they can follow me on Twitter at Rob Walling, R-O-B Walling. And then uh, I have a podcast called Startups with the Rest of Us, where I talk a lot about starting software companies and, uh, and marketing them. Cool. All right. Well, I'll have links to all those sites in the, uh, in the show notes at themcmethod.com. Rob, thanks for coming on the show. It's absolutely my pleasure. It's great to be back here, John. Hey, everybody. Thanks for listening. If you want to discover more insider tips, tricks, and secrets about driving sales with email marketing, sign up for daily email tips from the autoresponder guy. Go to dropdeadcopy.com slash podcast. Sign up, confirm your email address, and I'll send you daily emails on how to improve your email marketing and make more sales via email. You'll find out why open rates don't matter and the seven-letter word that underlies all effective marketing and much more.